that's when a hero or a martyr of the movement takes center stage in death, we are drawn to an intimacy of a relationship that is thicker than blood. While others may say that more than a red warrior is not structurally, is not structured dramatically to make for a rising action, the drama is all there in this non-fiction. AJ is spoken of by people who have known him up close at home, at school, in school, in the streets, in the countryside, and the battlefield. There are the endless letters by one and all who mattered in his life, but most especially by his wife and children and by AJ to them. There are accounts of his living and dying, of his militancy, comradeship, steadfastness, and leadership. This is one book about one man authored by quite a lot who speak as one in tribute to his humanity. More Than a Red Warrior provides a three-dimensional study of a protagonist who has, by dying, become larger than life. It shows us a mortal character imbued with an immortal vision, which has become his personification. Here we have a hero who is torn by conflicts, which he himself resolves at the expense of the personal. How he treasures the personal at the heart of his politics is what makes AJ human. More Than a Red Warrior is a book of virtues that is articulated by AJ in terms all too human. What strikes me most is how it prompts all of us to think of concerns that have become petty. Owing to AJ's ultimate sacrifice and those of Rekha, Brandon Kaslai, Madranga, Robert Kadaiwan, Beyao, Ricardo, Katubum Reyes, Pedrin Kajes Pangao, and Robert Kalimbo Perez. I, I must admit, I've said to other people what I told Cynthia, that I'd like to make a, a play or a movie out of their life stories. But in AJ, I did feel a stronger prodding, perhaps because with the tragedy comes the catharsis. That of knowing that AJ has not died in vain. In fact, the book says he shall live in the memory of Cynthia and Raya and Choro and all those who said their peace about the Red Warrior. The road less traveled by AJ has taken and that has made all the difference. The book values our conventional understanding of the proletarian militant. More than the real, the red warrior in Flamando is a man who is full of joy, of love, of beauty, of deep compassion, and sensitivity to friendship. It reverses our popular, popular definitions and imaginations of what the state had maliciously consigned as terrorists. It gives us the portrait of a human come of age, of a human realizing his reason for being, a human for others, not the determinate species being of academic Marxist anthropology, but a loving, joyful, sensitive, compassionate, and vulnerable father, son, friend, and comrade. <laughs> Lastly, the book is one primer on spirituality and political mysticism. His spirituality is the forming and reforming of one's whole being around the theme or a cause that matters most. And mysticism is that transcendental commitment that one gives to his, to his cause. And in AJ's case, national liberation and democracy. These are what one reads through the texts, the letters, and the many tributes made like AJ's soulmate, 
including the narrative of the Lakub encounter, the unconditionality of the love, life offering that is ages, serve as another living commentary to earn love, beautiful and powerful cream for the red hero. All those who are sacrificed take, the, take to the tomb the flowers of yesterday, some of which are withered and unrecognizable. Only one category of human advances towards death, almost totally dispossessed of all traditional consummation, is the red hero. He confesses up to his death the cause for which he had lived and clearly, coldly, consciously, he advances towards that nothingness in which he has learned to live as a free spirit. His sacrifice is different from that of the ancient martyrs. These died almost without an exception with a prayer on their lips, confident that they had thus nearly the heaven. But the communist era, whether under Char, the Chars, under Hitler, or Marcos, or Aquino, or under any other power, sacrifices himself without hope of resurrection. His Good Friday is not sweetened, much less absorbed, by any Easter Sunday, a Sunday in which he will personally return to life. The heaven to which the martyrs raise their arms meets flames and smoke does not exist for the red materialist. And nevertheless, he dies confessing the cross, and his superiority can only be compared with that of the very early Christians for John the Baptist. The Red Warrior's spirituality reaches up highest to the home of the just. The descriptive accounts and reports on the Akub encounter is the tragic tale of how the noblest outpouring of love and loving was repaid with violence in the most brutal of ways by the state. This effectively exposes not only the moral pretensions and rottenness of the national security state and its imperial masters, but bare naked as well, their historical illiteracy and sociological ignorance. But what one with a literary sense cannot miss is this story's continuity from and participation in one Pascal mystery is still concealed from the eyes of those uninitiated in the ways of the proletarian revolutionary. The passion, death, and resurrection of the one who proclaimed and struggle for the new and just world to come. He who said, take up your cross and follow me. May the book resurrect in every reader the passion of the red warrior. Why is it that many of us, so many of us, have been touched by him? He is certainly not the terrorist that the military claims. Ultimately, it is because he gave his life for others. He selflessly gave himself to his vision for a better society, not only for his children, but for all children. Not only for his generation, but for all generations. Nadagdagsan niyang kordigyera, di ipapatay para iti pagigyan. Nadagdagsan niyang kordigyera, di ipapatay ni AJ. Paalam at pinakamataas na pagpupugay, AJ. Your memory will live in our hearts forever. The second part 